Uh, this is a uh, daily chart of silver, and silver's having a very bullish day today. Of course, I'm in a short position, but uh, I think there's going to be some events maybe coming up that's going to change this. It had a very good day on Friday, and today it's looking very bullish. Uh, same with gold. Gold is going up quite a bit. Now, um, not going necessarily by the fact that this whole trend line, say for instance, if you changes to a weekly and you bring it in you know so the first day of the week it looks like silver is going up and you know but that's not telling you what's going on in the whole scenario um, you know on a weekly it looks bearish but I'm not going to tell you to go by that so much or even directly so much by the charts but um, we do have noticed that there's been a pattern that you might have a few days or three or four days when it's rising followed by a, f a faster rapid de you know decline in the price and that seems to be whatever the pattern is if there is any kind of pattern um, head fake sent me an article and um, I had a suspicion about some of the problems that was going on possibly behind the scenes with the euro this is not the exact article that I was sent but it's a similar article and it's actually dated today it is okay to display this article as long as I give credit for who it comes from and I will display the link on the uh, in the notes on the bottom of this video uh, so you can read the article in its entirety but uh, just to get this is the article itself um, from uh, FT.com Financial Times now Financial Times actually does have some very good articles and um, it's good to keep up on things. This is something I think that may change the metals markets rapidly and because there's going to be another problem coming up. It's kind of like, I don't know this for a fact, but something doesn't smell right <laughs> with this whole thing. I hate to even say that, but uh, it's not a good explanation. But let me just get on with this. He says, uh, uh, Greek yields are up as the credit default swaps trading is put on hold. So in other words, yields on new Greek bonds have jumped sharply because nobody wants them. In the past week, amid worries over a shutdown in the market, an insurance-like products used to hedge the risk of holding Athens debt or Greek debt. And this is basically a little quote from one of the traders the article referenced this is just this is yet another problem that will deter investors and banks from buying Greek bonds said a senior credit default swap trader at one European bank if you can't use CDS to hedge the risk of buying Greek bonds you may decide not to buy Greek bonds which means they're gonna have another big debt crisis again and they got no way to finance themselves right so that's what it looks like it's leading to now you know if you're looking at the markets right now um, all the metals are up now actually if you know I kind of expected the platinum and palladium to jump actually they did jump a hell of a lot the more this morning especially palladium then it settled back down but you know news that can come out later on will can drive these markets down and I also want to get in something about the trading houses that really control the commodity markets. These are some of the big ones. Uh, Vital Group, Geneva, Switzerland. A lot of them are in Switzerland. A lot of them are. And this gives the Swiss a kind of a reputation of, you know, being a safe haven for the ultra wealthy, which is somewhat true, you know. Um, you know, these are inv they're involved in physical oil trading. Uh, Glencore International. Um, well, they just had the biggest merger deal in the mining sector, and they also merged with this extra, extra talk, whatever. I don't even know how to say this name, but that's another one um, they merged with. This Glencore is more of a very high risk type of trading firm. They they they're under a lot of criticism for dealing with people that a lot of people say they shouldn't be dealing with, um, and it was founded by Mark Rich and you probably know a little bit about him he was president he was uh, pardoned by president clinton on the last day of uh, president clinton's day in office um he was he was up on charges and he stayed in switzerland up to that time and stuff like that so 
I don't know. I'll tell you, I'm going to go over a little bit what the deal was with that because um, it kind of displays just how things are in business and, you know, how much religion relates to business. You know, religion doesn't relate to business at all. I'll explain a little more on this, this deal. But again, you know, you're going through some of the trading house. This one's located in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Koch, Kansas. Uh, again, Geneva, Switzerland. Gents, Geneva, Switzerland. Re refined metals trading. Uh, um, also, again, Geneva, Switzerland. Oil trading emphasis on Russia. They had some um, with this particular trading house. Uh, there were some other stories about, you know, Putin's involvement with this. Probably true. Who the hell knows? But I mean, I don't know for a fact. But I mean. Um, I think a lot of things are going on behind the scenes. I heard a lot of stuff. Archer, Daniels, Midland, yeah, agriculture. Of course, they're located in Decatur, Illinois. They own about every damn thing there is with a farm in the Midwest. Period. You know, they're they're involved in everything. They own a the whole damn thing. Um, Noble Group, and they're they're in Hong Kong. Uh, again, this is another one in Switzerland. Crude oil and oil products. Um, White Plains, New York, and Connecticut. Now, these, um, this one is actually pretty interesting. This is actually associated originally with uh, the Rothschilds bought out by Occidental Petroleum in 2009 from Citigroup. Occidental Petroleum was um, Arm and Hammer, another one that was involved in the Communist Revolution and stuff like that. <laughs> I don't know if I would, I don't know what I should say on here or not, but. Uh, a lot of things are very much in, con, interconnected. I found Mark Rich's story. I, I knew about this guy before. Pretty interesting character. Um, you know, Mark Rich, born December 18, 1934, is an international commodities trader and entrepreneur. He's best known for founding the commodities group Glencore, which I just uh, showed here. Glencore, right? And uh, he was... He was indicted in the United States on federal charges of illegally making oil trades with Iran during the late 70s and early 1980s. Um, Iran hostage crisis and tax invasion, right? So he was in Switzerland at the time of the indictment and never returned to the U.S. Then he got a pardon from U.S. President Clinton on January 20th, 2001, on Clinton's last day in office. Um, pretty cool, huh? Anyway, um, one of the biggest market coups came during the 1973-74 Arab oil embargo when he used his Middle Eastern contacts to circumvent the embargo and buy crude oil from Iran and Iraq. So then he purchased it for $12 a barrel back then, like in the 70s, and he sold it to the oil-starved oil companies, uh, U.S. oil companies, for twice the price. So he's very smart. You know, I think that was pretty slick. But he was uh, circumventing the law, but he got pardoned. Rich had been credited with having credited had been credited with having created the spot market for crude oil in the early nineteen seventies, revolutionizing commodity trading. Um, his tutelage under Philip Brothers, that's all connected with Rothschilds, afforded rich opportunities to strike deals with various dictator dictatorial regimes and embargoed nations such as Iran. So he had a special relationship with Ayatollah Khomeini, the leader of the 1979 Iranian Revolution, which overthrew the Shah of Iran. So, you know, and it's pretty interesting, you know, you know, Mark Rich is, um, you know, he's, he's Jewish and, uh, He's I got some I think he's got some words from Israel or something like that. He's like uh, you know different things. Words was received an honorary doctorate from Bar I University in Israel in recognition of his contribution to Israel and stuff. So he's like, you know, he's Jewish and uh, but when it comes down to business, you know, he's dealing with Ayatollah Khomeini, who is a fundamentalist religious leader of you know Iran so my point is not so much the religious point but there is no religion when people are dealing with money and that is exactly how the world works so uh, I always thought that you know these revolutionary religious leaders on the top of Iran are not religious in any respect and the whole thing is a big front anyway so uh, you know 
people believe it. I don't believe it. But I think it's a big front thing, all the religion stuff. But really when it comes down to it, you'll see like supposedly opposite parties deal with each other for a common cause, money. Anyway, um, despite the Amer American embargo, Iran would become Rich's, Mark Rich's most important supplier of crude oil for more than 15 years. So he made a lot of money off that and it became like a billionaire and all that stuff like that. So, uh, um, but last year it looks like he had a significant decrease in pre in his from his previous wealth but that is reported on Forbes and you know it's my contention that Forbes list is a pile of BS all the way um, I've seen a number of things that weren't on this list and there were cash and there were certificates of deposit and you know <laughs> it was like you know a billion euros and you know the guy's got way more wealth than that and his various people and they're not even on his guy's list so you know this Forbes list is like the club list it's whatever the club wants to display to the public that's what I look at so I really don't know what Mark Rich has for money but he probably has a lot more money than it's being displayed but that doesn't make him a bad guy I think everybody does that even the little people do that you know everybody does that you know anyway um as far as what's coming up, I think um, we're going to see um, next week, we're going to see the next manufacturing data coming out for the end of March. And preliminary data suggests that China, Germany, and France are showing a major slowdown. So if you combine that with maybe a problem with... Um, this, you know, Greek yields up as CDS credit to FOP swap trading puts it everything on a hold. Um, you might see a lot of news that's going to bring the metals down. So, where I'm going to see I'm wrong with this bet is if I see it go up to like 35, then I'm going to say, well, I was wrong. But I think it's going to continue downward. And uh, I'm still holding in a short position because to jump in and out, it's too difficult to try to jump in and out for a day. I'm thinking this is going to sink down further. And uh, that's the way I'm playing right now. Doesn't seem like it today, but like I said, I'm sticking with it. And I'm not jumping out till I think it gets up near 35. And that will be a loss. That will be a loss. But I don't think it is. I think there's some other news coming up. And uh, for a few reasons. But you know what? I kind of highlighted these things with the uh, investment houses and things like that because um, I don't want to highlight this guy too much. I mean, I don't, I don't know nothing personally about Mark Rich or anything. I just wanted to point out that somewhat of an interesting story. You know, you know. Um, I just wanted to point out that the, um, you know, if I was an investment house, I would be trying to lure in the longs because the only way you could really slaughter them is to lure them in have them go along change the markets and when the news all comes out that you know the manufacturing data looks bad or there's this major problem in Europe Greece can't um, sell its bonds you know then you're gonna see the metals get slammed down you gotta lure them in first so that's what I think is going on but I'm not sure 